welcome to jasonchats.com. Hmm. You know, sometimes I make these videos and I think I've got a bit of like a bit of biscuit or something in my beard and I realise it's just another grey hair. So yeah, there you go. Hello. See, my hand. <laughs> hand see the difference in color my hand all around there it's actually yellow my hand is actually yellow isn't that weird I seem to it's like I've even bruised the like the wrist as well which doesn't really make sense so I can't actually do it fist but yeah so that's the isn't it lovely mm. so hello um yesterday I got Andre out and oh, he was kind of playing around and stuff uh, and wiggling about but he is fast asleep and he really is only waking up to do a poo and then go back to sleep I think yesterday he was annoyed with me because I washed his bag, the bag he likes to sleep in. <coughs> Excuse me, and I tidied the place up and um, put his toys all, you know, tidy. I think he was a bit upset with me, but took him out for a long walk today, and he's good as gold. Seems quite happy, contented. Uh, I got my light back. I was lending a neighbour um, my light. I've got a big like stand-up light thing, which is really bright. So now the picture's a bit better, but a bit brighter. It's less fuzzy, a bit less fuzzy, you know, which is good. So well, not so good because you can see me better. Which is possibly not a good thing, in it. Um, I actually filmed Andre earlier. It's a weird thing. I, I've got some. If you look back to what happened with my hand, you'll know that I uh, needed some light bulbs, so I ordered them and they came today. And they will pack it. This, this, this isn't as boring a story as it sounds like it's going to be. <laughs> oh my God, he's talking about light bulbs. Yeah, well, the packaging, it came in. Oh my God, he's talking about the packaging the light bulbs came in. That's even more boring than the actual light bulbs. No, just listen, it's fine. And it's bubble wrap. So I, I put it on the floor. I know that Andre was still asleep in his cage. The doors were open, but he's just having a lie in. I knew that as soon as he woke up, he'd go straight for the bubble wrap because he loves that stuff. I didn't know that he was going to grab my old slipper or his girlfriend and run to the bubble wrap and start having sex with it, which is what he did. Started shagging the uh, bubble wrap. So I thought, ah, I'll film it. Just. I don't know why, I just love seeing him doing things. <laughs> it makes me laugh, I don't know. It's all the different positions. I mean, he puts the joy of sex to shame, seriously. He's, he, he could write his own book. There's so many different positions. Anyway, he, I set the camera up, but I put it on a tripod like this, on the stand, and I just stayed back here and filmed him. Because usually when I put the camera close to him, he, He's camera shy and he runs away. He doesn't like being filmed. So I just filmed him and it was funny to watch. And I, was, I think I was filming for about 10 minutes, maybe less. So I just stayed behind my desk and I'm just on the computer, but I'm like watching him. And he starts screaming. And I'm like, oh my God. And his willy was caught in the plastic 
So I, I run over, I grab him. It happens sometimes, he gets it caught in stuff. Um, whenever he does get it caught in something, I take that thing away. But it's really hard to stop him from, because he's sh he shag anything. He, you know, anything. Barbed wire, a barbed wire fence, he would try and shag it. He, he can't help himself. Um, if the queen visited, I'm, I'm just saying, he, he really, anyway, um, he was caught, so I had to hold him, and I can't put him away, because that could, could, like, do damage to him, so I have to wait and hold him, and he struggles, because he doesn't like being held like that, but I have to hold him until his willy goes back inside his body, and then the plastic or whatever is attached to him just falls away, you know, comes comes away. And he was screaming, so I, um, he did. He stopped screaming once I held him, and eventually it went away, and I chucked the plastic away. But it ruined the video. It really ruined the video. So I can't. I wanted to upload it today as part of this Jason Chats vlog. But it, it's going to entail editing it, and I suppose I could, but I can't, can't be bothered. It's terrible, isn't it? I just can't be asked. So uh, maybe another time. So today I have been <sighs> mainly today. I woke up at 10, um, had my breakfast about an hour later after I'd had my tablet for because I got a stomach, um, I got acid reflux, so I have to have a tablet before eating for an hour in the mornings. And after I'd had my breakfast, a cup of coffee, I just felt tired, I wanted to go back to sleep. But I didn't, I refrained from doing that. And I've been focusing really on the a couple of things. First of all, uploading the hypnotic buffet number 14 that I recorded last night because the internet I've got is so temperamental, it wouldn't upload it. But this morning, I uploaded it straight away. So, um, but next time I won't record it that way. I'll go back to recording it with a recording studio, not using the app. Then I had to upload the Jason Chat video from last night because that wouldn't upload either last night. So that took a while to get all that sorted and sharing those on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Then, and I don't know why, uh, I started um, uploading more of my sleep hypnosis sessions onto my new YouTube channel and I've got you two new two YouTube channels uh, one is uh, for hypnosis says but I'm only going to put sleep hypnosis sessions on there and another one which is for the Jason chats so all my Jason chats vlogs are on there so if you go to YouTube and put Jason chats you'll I'm, I'm guessing you'd come up with my stuff all the videos that I've put on there so far. But of course you can go to jasonjats.com and that's the website. And I had this thing, I thought, you know what? I'm doing all this stuff, I'm trying to get all everything organized, trying to get everything um, sort of neatly put together. So that I can produce new material so I can record new sessions and I thought well you know what I've stuck to my hypnotic buffet every Monday I've been making these Jason chats every day for some reason I'm still doing this so so I am sticking to a kind of routine which I'm fairly pleased about and I thought you know why not introduce another routine and start making 
more sleep sessions. And there's a few reasons why I thought about that. I thought, well, I'd like to make more sleep hypnosis sessions anyway, because that sounds like just a good thing to be doing. Also, I like the idea um, of uploading more regular videos to YouTube, more regular rela uh, sleep sessions. Did I say relaxation? I said sleep earlier. Anyway, sleep I'm talking about. I'm a bit tired, sorry. To my main you know, SoundCloud and iTunes channel, podcast. And also the sleep sessions are the ones that have always been the most successful or the most uh, appreciated or liked or whatever you want to call it. So I thought, yeah, maybe that's what I'll start doing. So I've got my recording studio things set up in the bedroom. And I made a sleep hypnosis session today or a sleep session. It's called Let Me Bore You to Sleep number one and possibly tomorrow I may record let me bore you to sleep number two so they're recorded on the audio uh, I'm not I suppose I could make them as a video there's not really any reason why I shouldn't Maybe, maybe I could. Maybe I just make it like this. But I think with the sleep sessions, I like to lay down and I do find myself drifting off to sleep when I'm, when I'm actually recording them. And also, when people are listening to my sessions, they don't need to see me. You know, it's, it's just me talking. Especially if you're, you know, trying to go to sleep. But anyway, so I did my first sleep session for a while, and I might do another one tomorrow. I might do another one the day after, and the day after that. I may do one every day. So we'll see. Something else I thought about doing is. So I used to, a while back, I used to do a an audio session which was called Life of a Bipolar Hypnotist. And it was an audio blog, it wasn't a vlog. So well, some of them were vlogs, but mainly uh, it started off, I think, really as a, uh, an audio where I would record first thing in the morning and it would be my first thoughts of the day it would I talk about dreams that I just had during the night I talk about how I was feeling uh, and it would be very what is it, stream of consciousness whatever you want to call it just whatever was going on in my mind I'd just talk about it and discuss it which is kind of like the hypnotic buffet but this was every day every morning and it's also kind of like adjacent chats but not a video it's kind of uh, I don't know it seems like a lot and also Do I need to really do any more? You know, it's just there's that hour between when I wake up and I eat, and it's an hour that I can use for something uh, specific. And it might sound weird, but there's a period when I first wake up, my sense of humor is different to how it is the rest of the time. 
there's something about just waking up. I think I'm a bit drier. I think I'm a bit. Um, I don't know what it is. There's. Uh, I feel like I've got more of a gallows humour kind of thing going on there. So we'll see. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I. I'm going to stick to doing hypnotic buffets, even though. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that could do it with a little bit of planning, a little bit of preparation on what I'm going to talk about. The I think with the hypnotic buffets, they're going to evolve. They're going to become something hopefully better than what they are. They'll grow as hopefully I grow ish. Although I think I'm regressing in some ways, but hey, I don't mind. Uh, the other thing, I'm going to see my niece soon, my new niece that's uh, only uh, just over a week old, maybe two weeks, something like that. So that would be good. Um, oh, it's a helicopter police helicopter probably other than that other than that oh the other thing okay so I've been uploading my videos to YouTube and the own the process is basically I'm downloading them from Vimeo then uploading them to YouTube so it's a whole process going on which takes quite a lot of time and some of the files are very big so it takes quite a while to upload so far, if I had a quick look, two seconds. I've got two subscribers already. Okay, 93 views. It's not bad. I've only had the, the channel for a couple of days. And, uh, Forty-four videos so far that I've found. Quite a few of my insomnia sessions or sleep sessions are actually I've got them as audio only, and they're not as a video. Or maybe I used to have them as a video, but I lost them when I've lost some YouTube channels. So I need to turn the audio into a video, and there's probably about twenty of those. I think probably that I need to do that too and I've got another two or three maybe four to upload no probably about two or three to upload that are already videos so it's going okay it's all right and uh, I've had a, some weird I've had a couple of weird comments I had a nice comment from someone saying um, let me just read them to you okay This one says, if this channel were actually Jason Newland's comeback, that would make my day. Sadly, I doubt that he and YouTube are ever going to settle their beef. Ah, but we have. Well, I've just kind of moved on and um, that was from Mac from Camp MC. Thank you, Mac from Camp MC. I need to like, put a little comment, a reply on that one. The, the ex no, I did open the channel on the 19th of March, but I just only uploaded one video. So I've only been uploading the rest of the videos the last two days. And I had a c comment, I had three messages today, exactly the same message saying, fantastic video, keep it up. Would you like to be YouTube friends? So, but that's one was yeah. It's like one was ten hours ago, the other was um, like fifteen minutes later, and the other one was five hours ago on a different video. That 
Alice from someone called Trap Town on YouTube. I had a message two hours ago from someone called Franco Della Mia. That's Della with a hyphen or dash Mia. Commented, Povra Fu. Probably pronounced that incorrectly. Didn't know what it meant because um, I'm not Chinese. Turns out it's French. So, um, so ch Chinese has got, not, got anything to do with it. Um, anyway, I went into Google Translate and it basically says you fool or you're foolish, something like that. And that was on a video uh, which was part of a sleep hypnosis course I did last year, about this time last year, no, probably about January, February time. And they were some of my best work, actually, I'd say. So I don't really know what that man or woman's problem is. So what's weird, I thought it was like going to be someone that hates hypnosis. So I went to their channel, or their YouTube channel. It looks like they're actually a fan of hypnosis, so they clearly just don't like me. Um, I think what it is sometimes is... Not everybody, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to see how I can phrase this so it doesn't sound like I'm being rude to wankers. Um, I, some people think that hypnosis really is the, the show stuff, the, like that's all it is rather, that's making, you know, saying something to someone on a stage and causing them to collapse unconscious or by doing something in the street and tapping them and grabbing their neck and you know getting them to fall down. I actually know how to do that stuff. I don't want to do that stuff but I know how it's done and this isn't that. This is something different. This is me talking on a video, I don't know why I'm you know this obviously because you're seeing it, but what I do on my hypnosis videos is very different to what I would do with somebody if they was in the room with me. And I have done hypnosis with people in the room with me. It's not, it's not like I've never done it, I have. I started doing that, what I said, 18, 20 years ago nearly. So I've been involved in hypnosis for 20 years now. So I'm not, um, I do know my stuff. I'm no expert on anything. I'm no teacher. I don't teach people how to do this stuff. I don't, all I can do is do my version of that. In a, I think of it like art. You know, I've learned about art. If I was, if this was art, I would have gone to you know, bought books about art, bought books about how to draw, how to paint, um, maybe the history of art, and studied other people's work and watched other people at work and read other people's opinions and life experiences as an artist, all that stuff. But ultimately, my art is going to be personal. I'm going to be producing something very unique for me and not everybody's going to like it not everybody's going to look at a painting and think oh yeah you know not everyone's going to have that uh, excitement not everybody's some people will be disgusted some people will be offended some people will be feel spiritually nourished you know it's going to be different for everyone so this is kind of what I'm doing. This is, in some ways, I've maybe tailored what I do to suit me, in a sense. How I am as a person, maybe how I talk. I am a, a slow talker. Not always a slow talker, but generally, 
talking slowly and fairly precisely, I, I hope, is something that I would do naturally, uh, more so on a video than maybe in person. And I try to reach a, a wider audience And, you know, who is it? I forget who it was who said that. There was someone I, I watched, I think it was an interview with them, and they said the good thing about the internet is, I think maybe they were a teacher or there was something, so they could be, or I don't know, something, but they could be in a room and teach 20 people in a classroom, or they could go online and teach 20,000 or 20 million, you know, it depends on what numbers of people watch. And I've always kind of felt that way is I can be in a room of one person and help them, which is brilliant. And um, in some ways, I don't really feel the confidence to do that anymore, but I did. I was a qualified, I qualified as a counsellor as well as a therapist and hypnotist and all that stuff, NLP, master practitioner. So, and I have done that in person with people many, 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 many times. But now, and well, the last 12 years, but I've also done it with people in the last 12 years, but especially now it's online, solely online. Although I do do the odd live broadcast where I interact with people. Which brings me, I need to sort of start organising that. So if you're interested in that, I know there's a crossover. Some people that watch the Jason Chat videos got no interest maybe in hypnosis or any of that stuff. But if you are, just let me know what kind of a good time to do that. I could potentially broadcast on YouTube or there's other ways. I've got Spreaker, which I'm thinking of doing a live broadcast on there. Because I, that's what I'm paying. I'm paying for that service. So I should be using it, really. So the idea of reaching a larger audience. But the downside of that. The problem. Advert. Will I get any paid for it? No. And by the way. If you can send me, your, send me all your personal details about yourself, your family friends, job history, all that stuff. I'm thinking of opening my uh, own social network website. So it'd be good to get a head start, you know. So I was thinking, yeah, what I'm saying is the problem with doing something online is I've got to try and cater for whoever is watching or listening. With the Jason Chats, with the Hypnotic Buffet, it don't really matter. Uh, because you either like it or you don't like it, it's, it's whatever. You just, it is what it is. But with the hypnosis sessions, I have to be as vague as possible in order to try to embrace and include as many people as possible. So it's about inclusion, not exclusion. And if I start talking about paddling in the sea or swimming in a swimming pool or sitting on a mountain top or laying in the bath even, it could be a trigger. It could, some people are afraid of water. Some people would be scared of being in a bath and drowning because they're unconscious or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so I might have a fear of sharks and they won't go near the ocean. It's, it's very sort of being on a mountain. Maybe they're scared of um, bird shitting on them. I, I, who knows? But the whole thing, or goats, they might be scared of go not goats shitting on them, but they might be scared of goats because goats might be there anyway I try and do vagueness try and do it so I know that 
talking about going into the countryside with the trees and noticing the smell of the air and the smell of the flowers and the breeze and all that stuff is brilliant for those that like that. And, but for those that don't like that, it's excluding them from being able to listen to my stuff. So I try and be vague in that way. Also, the vagueness is sometimes I'm very unblatant. I'm probably the, the least blatant hypnotist in a sense of, I think you'd gain, people could gain by just listening to my sessions, but not necessarily trying to explain this but for me what it's about it's about whatever somebody's issues are that they have that they can listen to pretty much any of my hypnosis stuff any of my audios videos whatever and may benefit from that session in a way that could help them with their issue, whatever it is. And I don't mean uh, watching a nail biting hypnosis session if someone's maybe got an issue with a phobia of um, dogs or something, because that's two completely different things, perhaps. listen to a relaxation session for someone who's got a phobia can only help you know it's, and there's always not always but quite often there's a sense of relaxation included in hypnosis but you don't need to be relaxed for hypnosis to work now, everybody's it's about using your own personality I think with hypnosis or with whatever you do, if you're a counsellor, hypnotist, if you work as a, a work in a fire um, department, or you work in a, on a checkout in a supermarket, or you're a dustman, or deliver milk, or I'm just going to go through every single job there is. The point is, a goat herder, you know, mountaineer, shark um, keeper. I, just I'm saying whatever job you do you kind of put your own personality into it and if you're not able to do that I think it stunts the person's well, first of all it stunts the person's enjoyment of that job and maybe they won't want to go to work and they want to leave and do something different but I think it would perhaps stunt the being as good as you can be or to bring out the creativity and I've been in a lot of jobs in the past, I've had a lot of jobs where creativity was the last thing that was required or even accepted and it's a shame because I did I, I believe everybody is creative right? I believe I'm creative, but it's not because I think that I'm special. I just think that everybody is creative. Everybody has, also everybody has something that they're good at. Not just good at, but brilliant at. That they love, that they really absolutely love doing. And I just think it's a shame that there may be quite a few people out there that don't, first of all, they don't know what it is that they're good at or they're not aware of it or they've not looked for it or they've not had the opportunity or they don't feel they've had the opportunity to find that thing that they absolutely adore doing or maybe as in my case when I was younger and there's still some of it trickles down still it still lingers is the lack of there's a lack of lots lack of self-belief in 
myself. Well, obviously, self belief is in yourself, isn't it? So, a lack of self belief, a lack of. I think with a lack of self belief, then comes a lack of motivation. Because how can you be motivated towards something that you don't believe in? <gasps> well, that was clever, you know. So, a lack of self belief leads to a lack of motivation. And this should be what I'm talking about with my hypnotic buffet. So I might do that next Monday. I probably forget though. So I didn't believe in myself. I thought that I was stupid and thick and an idiot. That's what I was told many, many times. That's how I was treated. By the teachers at school that's probably I'm guessing how I acted how I behaved towards those teachers and maybe towards other people and I didn't realize until I'm not sure if I still believe it there's still doubts there But I know now that remembering facts doesn't that's doesn't mean or if someone doesn't remember facts doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. That's not a sign of intelligence, that's a sign of a good memory. You know. Doesn't mean they're not intelligent, they can still be intelligent. It's you know, understanding what those uh, facts are, connecting them, and you know, so this, but for me, it's more about. I like the idea of being knowledgeable about less, but have a deeper knowledge of that thing, whatever it is, that subject. So I'd rather be knowledgeable have a lot of knowledge about, for example, hypnosis, and have a deeper knowledge of that, a 20 year knowledge built on reading, studying, watching videos, making videos, you know, and all the stuff that I've done, training and things I've done. I'd rather have that 20 year knowledge and that deep, deep well of experience and knowledge than no lot, you know, about lots of different things, but just have a kind of a, a mild interest because I don't do mild interest. I struggle with that. I don't, I'm either really interested in something or I'm not. And my list of things I'm interested in is very, it's not a huge amount, if I'm honest. Hypnosis, counseling, that anything kind of within the therapy, the psychotherapy, talking therapy, spectra, like, um, you know, uh, psychology, how the mind works, things like that, neuropsychology or neurophysics, I don't know, whatever, whatever it's called, all those things. And I would class Buddhism within that as well. Uh, I think the crossover is mindfulness because hypnosis, relaxation, the brain, psychotherapy is all to do with the brain and mindfulness and Buddhism is very much to do with the brain about calming the, the mind and dealing with the mind. So those are the things I'm interested in. Things in the past I was interested in, philosophy, poetry. Again, I class that all as the same thing. I class it all fits together. I would love, 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 love to be a mathematics genius. To be absolutely fascinated with maths and numbers and to, you know, to be able to get in touch with the importance of numbers. And it is so important. If without, without maths, now, where would we be? You know, it's, we've got, it's so important for biology, for 
curing diseases, all these different calculations and different things. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm just, you know, I know how it's really, really important. Without it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have planes flying, we wouldn't have rockets in the sky, not ones with bombs, but, you know, spaceships and, um, so I understand that's really important, you know, going back to even navigation times to explore other parts of the world with shipping and on big ships and mathematics for working out the distances between the stars and all that stuff. I've got no interest in it. Zero interest in maths and my mathematic knowledge is very, very basic. And I don't care. I used to care, it used to bother me, I used to hate the idea that I was thick and I could never be any good at maths and it was just like a, a curse or something or a punishment. I can do other things, you know. I'm no good at heart surgery. I'm never gonna be uh, any good at heart surgery. It's never gonna affect my life. I'm never gonna need to do heart surgery because I could read all the books in the world and know everything about heart surgery. But unless I'm trained as a doctor, the second I open someone's chest up and start doing playing around with their heart, I'm in trouble, even if I save their life. So, I guess, it's just a guess, I don't know if anyone's ever done that. But I don't wanna, that would, to me that would be pointless to study something that I don't do. So I studied counselling, I did counselling, okay, I don't do counselling anymore, not in its traditional form of being face to face with somebody, although I do, um, I do try and help people sometimes, uh, and I try and be, I try to incorporate the counselling therapy side of things within the therapy, some of the sessions that I do online, the audios, and videos. So that's what I've, I was able to find something. And for me, that's, that's my train spotting. To find something, train spotters, and I, I'm not picking on train spotters. Uh, it's really an admiration for anybody that can find something that they love doing. That's why I don't, I don't like really, I suppose sometimes I might flippantly criticise people, but I don't really mean it. I don't feel um, critical towards a football fan or a rugby fan, someone that likes to watch um, tennis, but they love it, you know, and absolutely adore it, not just as a fan, but like an absolute super fan. Or somebody that collects stamps, or football cards, or baseball cards maybe in America. Somebody that um, whatever it is, something that they love doing is amazing to have that because that motivates that person to get out of bed. It gives that person something to look forward to. So they might be in a job that may be quite difficult. Yeah, they might, they can think about Saturday morning when they can go fishing or go um, standing on the platform at a train station with their friends drinking coffee out of a flask and taking pictures or video in the, the trains as they come in. They've got something to look forward to. Something that is theirs and that is personal and something they love. Instead of connecting that passion towards a human being, like a baby that will one day go off. What do you do if you devote your whole 
all your attention towards um, and you know you don't have a hobby or anything but everything's about your child your child's going to get older going to want to spend time with their own friends not going to want to spend time with you just this a natural growing up thing what do you do then so we all need that thing that we love doing that's what I think and I found what I do and the additional thing which is something that I struggled with for years and years and years uh, is whenever I had I kind of I went through periods when I spent years and years doing something that I absolutely loved and then I kind of fell out of love with it and that gap between doing that and then doing nothing was very very I don't know very lonely emotionally a very emotionally lonely period and I was directionless and even though so I stopped doing comedy I used to do comedy wasn't totally good at it I had some good nights but it wasn't you know I was never gonna um, I said yeah, it was the only way I'm gonna set a set the stage on fire was with gasoline you know, basically I was never going to make it onto television perhaps so I stopped doing that in 2000 uh, 1998 but I kind of wound it down for a couple of years before that and I really really felt empty Really, and like, didn't have anything to replace it. Didn't have anything to get out of bed for. But then, 2008, January, got my first two hypnosis books, and since then, like 1998, sorry, not 2008, 1998. But even then, I didn't start doing the hypnosis stuff online until 2006. So it was eight years of studying and reading and all that stuff before I actually did anything with it. I did see some people, I did do hypnosis with some people before that, but having something to focus on. So when I get depressed, when I get low, when I, whatever, I've always got this, my foundation, I've always got something to, it's like a, I wouldn't call it a safety net, it doesn't feel safe but it's a net it's something and as I'm falling I see signs that remind me you know and I think when I get crappy messages like calling me a fool and stuff like that and I've had a few messages but also I've had some really lovely messages as well the lovely messages remind me that I'm doing something good that is worthwhile the nasty messages remind me that I can't please everybody I can't it's some people are not going to like what I do but I'm not here to please everyone and I don't want to please everyone there's no point it's uh I don't know, it must be something, like some food that pretty much anyone can eat. You know, like a, a bit of bread or a cracker. You know, we could all eat a cracker. Most unless you've got a wheat intolerance, but generally, but it's bland. I don't want to be a cracker, I want to... I want to be a prune. I don't want to be a prune. Why do I say prune? Nature's nature's laxative. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go. Andre's just come back to do a poo. Are you going to come say hello, Andre? No, he's been there too long. He's done a poo. And he's going to wipe his bum on the carpet. Yeah, that's what he's done. 
You'd come and say hello. And now he's licking his bum. Yeah, that's nice. Andre, you'd come and say hello. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come and say hello. Hello. What are you doing? What are you doing? He knows my tricks and he didn't want to get up. Oh well, I can't, I don't want to force him to get up, he's gone back to sleep, so I'll just leave him. So that's it, I've bobbled on for a little bit longer than normal. It's 12.12, 12, so it's 12 minutes past midnight. It's so strange, I actually, I was feeling a bit crappy earlier before I started recording this. Now I feel a bit better. It's weird. So maybe I will just continue doing these. It's just really hard when I start getting, well I've had no, I've had no views. I'm actually, I've got a YouTube channel with my Jason Chat, so I've mentioned it earlier. I had no views at all, because all the videos on my jasonchats.com are from Vimeo, they're all on Vimeo. So I pay £200 a year for my Vimeo channel and I can upload 20 gigabytes a week. So I'm gonna just make use of that really. At least then they're safe. They're all, you know, they're, they're there forever as long as I pay the £200 a year. So if you want to watch me on YouTube, just stick in Jason Chats. Uh, it's one word. Um, if you want to watch my hypnosis stuff, you just put my name in, Jason Newland, into YouTube. And my hypnosis, some of my hypnosis videos on other people's channels, they've uh, put my stuff on their channels, which I'm fine with. You can do what you want, share my videos around. Um, but you'll see that there's a channel with 40 plus sleep hypnosis sessions. It's among, some of it's among my best work. <laughs> so if you think that's crap, then, you know, you probably won't like any of the other stuff either. Because it gets worse from there. Hmm. Right, I'm going to go. I wish you all well happiness, safety, and that's it. I'll see you next time. I'll probably be back again tomorrow. Bye bye. I also, you can visit my website, jasonnewland.com, where all my stuff is. But there you go. There we go. See ya.